welcome to this uh, second lecture. In the first lecture, we have explained uh, various aspect of uh, differential equations including the importance of studying ODE as a topic of analysis. That is what we concentrated in the uh, in the last lecture and that is what we are going to do it throughout the lecture. And what uh, we have especially emphasized is that uh, the methods available to study ordinary differential equations is very limited and there are very handful of uh, examples where you can actually develop methods. In fact, uh, most of the physical problems and the corresponding differential equations cannot be solved in the sense that uh, of implicit explicit that means the your solution y as a function of x and a, a implicit relation between y and t which is in general not possible in most of the interesting differential equations. It is in this respect only we explain the concept the enlarge the concept of uh, solutions to differential equations. We the solution does not uh, no, it the, it's no longer means that when there is a solution the solution can be explained uh, or given in an implicit or explicit form. There are other, uh, also other concept of uh, ex, uh, solutions which we may not come into that, but it is always important especially when you study control theory and other uh, physical problems. We will not come to that one, but for us when you there is a solution, solution exists and that is in the this is the scenario where you need to understand study the solutions uh, uh, and the qualitative study begins there especially the qualitative uh, existence uniqueness and then of course, more qualitative analysis about differential equations. In the next uh, 2 to 3 lectures including this lecture, we are going to present few real life examples. These examples are not new, but it is a uh, important examples it is available in the literature and we will give some details about some of the examples in this first two three lectures and other details of some other examples you will see when we proceed the course in other lectures we will explain to it. So, you will see also in the through these examples uh, uh, just producing even solutions explicitly or implicitly is not enough because the solutions may not reveal uh, its features. So, the idea if you want to understand you have to even after getting the solution you will see that you have to study the solutions uh, in a sense of analysis. But before coming to the example, I would like to uh, explain one or two issues uh, which uh, I learned from experience by uh, going and teaching students of uh, BSc students especially. There are certain issues uh, which are not clear not only to the students and is also not explained to the students by the teachers properly. And we want to spend some time maybe uh, 10 minutes on that and if those who are already thinking that that is trivial they can just get out uh, just uh, bypass this part of the thing and they can get into the examples directly. So, let me start with an example. example what do you want to do it this is an example from integration so i'm going to from the integration theory as you know that the do is started from the integration theory so i want to start with a very simple example which you do it in your plus 2 time and that is where our all trouble quite often starts certain steps are not clear to it. look at the integral you want to do it y cube dy you want to integrate the there are two ways of doing it you immediately know that what this integral is. So, you immediately write y power 4 by 4 that is fine there is no problem that is good, but you do not know this thing. The another way is which is important here you are able to do it because you know the antiderivative you are uh, you can do that one, but then when you do not know antiderivative the integration is done via substitution. So, what do you do it you will substitution you will do substitution 
what you do is that suppose you I put y square equal to t one substitution need not be unique or equivalently y equal to root t. The immediate step you write is you will immediately say the next step you never think of that you will immediately write 1 by 2 root t dt and the next step in the solution you write is therefore, this is what the steps you are writing in your 12 standard exactly I am going to write and I want to know that y cube dy is equal to y square is your t and your y dy uh, y square is t. So, dy is equal to yeah uh, uh, otherwise we will write here 2 y dy is equal to dt. So, let me use that one. So, uh, one of this both ways you can write it. So, 2 y dy is equal to dt and you immediately say that. So, y dy y square is substitute as t y dy is half dt you write half dt and you write t square by 4 this is the procedure you follow which is nothing but y by 4 by 4. Answer. So, what is not clear which I never got an answer from uh, uh, the BSC or other students when you ask what do you mean by this? This is where the first uh, difficulty in understanding coming to you. What do you mean by what is the meaning meaning of d y d t? If you do not know the meaning of so that is the first step and we never most of the time we never get a satisfactory answer to that. In fact, we do not understand this we do not know it we do not know at this level that is important why I say that at this level when you study advanced uh, differential uh, advanced uh, topics in mathematics like differential geometry etcetera then you do interpret this in a uh, different way, but that is not the thing we have to understand at this stage. So, when you do not know d y and d t uh, how do you uh, how uh, so, so the question is that what is this what is 2 y d y is equal to d t. So, I want to spend a bit of time here 2 minutes here. So, here is the what is your trouble you are to what do you know really is. So, you have to understand that when you treat y as a function of y t that is what we are doing it we know what is d y by d t together this you are as a function of t you know what is this you do not know what is d y probably you do not know what is d t this is a symbolic representation this is a notation to understand the meaning of this limit limit delta t tends to 0 y of t plus delta t minus y of t by delta t. So, you have the meaning for as a whole of these things but you do not have the individual meaning to it. So, that is uh, uh, what you have to ok. So, that is what we have to similar I will come to that example together. So, similarly let me start with one more example where a similar lack of understanding this I want to do it because differential equation similar thing how you proceed here you have d y by d t equal to a of y in the similar way what you write is that the next step you write is that all of you will write d y by d t. So, think d y by y is equal to a d t this you do it immediately and then say that on integration on integration you immediately write integral of d y by d y is equal to integral of a d t plus some constant integrate you get your log y these are the steps written quite often a t plus c naught and finally, with one more step you write y t is equal to c e power a t. Good, the answer is fine. See the whole thing is that in the previous example the answer is right, even the answer is correct here. So, again the issue is that what do you mean by d y by y is equal to y 
and this is what versus is an arbitrary constant here. So, what is? So, what is the meaning again? What is d y is equal to a d t d y by y is equal to a d t to do that because to explain this one if you want to understand this one if you want to understand this you have to understand d y and here is a important result we quite often bypass, but that is one of the important aspect when you want to study the not only the integration theory uh, many other things. Whenever you develop an integration theory, you have to understand uh, one of the important result what is called the change of variable formula. So, we will introduce in our preliminary change of variable is what is the underlying principle behind all these things to explain to use that. So, what I am trying to say is that all these are all. So, when you uh, recall the first example, when you have, uh, so uh, when you call, uh, when you writing this one, this is only a symbolic representation of this fact, that is what I am saying that. So, as such this has no meaning. So, you have an expression here say 1, you have an expression here 2, you have an expression here 3. What I am saying that 1 and 3 have meanings, 2 is only a representation of the fact 3. What you really need to prove derive 3 from 1 and this is uh, the part here the part d y by d i equal to y you have to view it as a step to represent 3 and this is where is given from the what is called from the, the change of variable formula. How does a change of variable formula looks like which is what we are going to explain, but you will see it in the preliminaries. Suppose you want to integrate integral of uh, suppose you want to integrate f of y d y and you are making a change of variable that means, when you are change of variable here y you view it as the variable here view uh, the view y is the independent variable as far as this is concerned okay uh, uh, and then you are making a y going to equal to as a fun making a change of variable as a function of g t you have t you see you are making. So, you are having the independent variable y you are making to a new variable t via this relation. So, in that case f of y will be f of g of t you see and thus this can be viewed as a function of t you see you have a function of t and hence we can integrate h, we can integrate h, h with respect to t. So, the question is that what is the relation? What is the relation? This is given by the change of variable formula. This is what is given by change of variable formula, which thing that mean you if you integrate this one f of y d y is equal to nothing but integral f of g of t g prime of t d t this is non trivial. So, it is not immediate need a proof need a proof of course need a proof and this is what you will be seeing in the need a proof is not trivial. Okay. This is what I want to say that. So, whenever you making a, an integration is introduced 
you have to always uh, prove certain types of change of variable formula. Unless we do that one, we will not be able to proceed further, we will not be able to integrate quite often many interesting functions. So, the change of variable formula is very, very important uh, when you study any integral, whenever you there is a you might have studied on just not just one integration, many other types of you integration you will come across with that. Each time you have to do a change of variable formula. This is also important when you have a multi valued function. Suppose, if it is a function of different variable y 1 etcetera y n, how do you change it? Then the change of variable formula is much more complicated. You will have in terms of here certain Jacobians etcetera there. Okay. And when so, when you whenever you make a substitution y equal to g of t, the normal procedure you immediately write d y is equal to g prime of t d t. What I am trying to convey to you is that this is only a symbolic symbolic representation of this fact. So, whenever I am telling that you can integrate into whenever you have function f n whatever if f equal to 1 you will have integral of d of y is equal to integral of g of t. This is the fact used here. So, as such this has no meaning if at all you are giving going to give meaning is that you have to give this meaning to this fact this one. With this change of variable you will uh, they may uh, in the uh, preliminaries we may say a few more words about it there will be of course it has a function of y you will get a function of t but you have to resubstitute t in terms of y all that facts are there essentially that one so on the or you will have the limits for this integration then there is no problem if it's not limits so you have to resubstitute back that's what you do now let's recall the facts now uh, recall our example recall example 1 and I do not want to use it because I do not have anything meaning to that. I want to see prove everything just using my integration recount example 1, 2 examples we are doing and integration theory example. What is the first example? You will have f of y is equal to y cube and then you have substitute y square is equal to t or y is equal to root t. And then I want to uh, understand the integration now with this relation to that one. So, I am not going to write d y equal to something because that is such a uh, uh, I am not going to use uh, d y equal to d uh, whatever 1 by root 2 d d t at all you because that has no meaning. So, I want to understand the integral of that one. So, what is your y cube d y here is equal to change of variable here is a change of variable this is the change of variable. What do you want to string? Instead of the change of variable, I want to substitute y square equal to t. So, f of that when you I put y is equal to root t, I will get root t power cube. And then what is my g of t here? My this is my g of t you see. So, I want g prime of t. So, I want root t prime d t. So, when I write this one, so I have not used anything, I have used the change of change of variable formula. I the, if I substitute that one, I will get it t power 3 by 2, 1 by 2 root t d t is nothing but so I have arrived that half of t half cos t t d t. So, you see, so you arrived that formula integral of y cube, I approved this third equation without bypassing that uh, thing you apply just that and then you proceed it. So, this is your first example which is So, whenever you do it we keep we will also write this thing now onwards. So, whenever we write something like this d y equal to something like g prime of v keep it in your mind all the time that there is something relation to this one some sort of that is the meaning of it. So, you need to prove it, you need to require you require a change of variable formula at all point of time to conclude that one you see. Now, we will come to the uh, other example as also differential the example 2 which we have done example 2. 
what is the example 2? You have your d y by d t is equal to a of y you see. I do not want to write d y equal to d y by y equal to a d t. Eventually, we will do it as a, but we have it in mind. So, I want to write this is d y by d t is meaningful I told you, because it is a function of t. So, there is no problem. So, I can write y is meaningful. So, I will write 1 over y d y by d t is equal to this all function of t. So, y is a function of t d y by d t is a function of t you will have a is a constant which is a function of t. So, I can integrate integrate when I integrate with respect to t what do I get it? I get 1 over y of t d y by d t which is a function of t d t is equal to integral of a of t a of d t a of d t plus some constant constant of integration do it. No change of variable what is the change of variable here again change of variable here t to y you can make change of variable anywhere you like it. I want here the change of not uh, actually earlier it was y of t. So, I want a t going to y. I want to view instead of t as my independent variable I want to uh, see y as my independent variable and I want to see as you know very well 1 over y is the function coming into picture. So, I want to integrate 1 over y now I am viewing y as independent variable I am, I am differentiating. So, my f of y is 1 over y here here f of y is my 1 over y and my g of t is equal to that. So, here f of y is equal to 1 over y and my g t is nothing but y of t this is what you are doing it. So, if I do that one by change of variable again change of variable formula again here I have my thing I need view this as a function of t and I want to differentiate this why differentiating is that is nothing but my d y by d t that is it y prime of t I want it and I can integrate d t okay. I have t into d t you see and this is nothing but this is nothing but this left hand side of this one. So, hence that implies if I substitute this for this term I will write integral over 1 over y d y is equal to integral of a d t plus c naught you see. So, you arrived at this formula with a change of variable and this again symbolically represented by d y by y is equal to a d t you see I want to say that this is it this cannot be derived from here this this formula cannot be derived from here it is not directly derived it is the fact of integration parts. So, this is the one important thing I would like uh, explain and one more fact which may be uh, looks simple, but uh, I have seen lot of students making mistakes another issue probably trivial to many of you, but I feel that I want to clarify this one because we are going to do this again and again. The other issue which you are again with three these examples let me uh, explain to you this is equal to a y. So, now uh, symbolically let me write it because uh, the meaning of this is understood now I can write this with uh, when I write this one I have something else in my mind right. The thing is that there is an integration for a change of variable formula. So, symbolically we are going to do this again and again, but and then you the next step most of the time we write log y or log natural you can use it log y is equal to a t 
plus c naught and then that you will write eventually y of t is equal to some arbitrary constant into e power a t. Fortunately, you get the correct solution, correct solution no problem, correct solution. But, this is not entirely correct while you are writing it, though you have a solution here when you integrate here, when you integrate this one, what you get is really log mod y is equal to a t plus c naught, this is what you will get it. And then from there you will get modulus of y t is equal to c e power a t naught, that is what you will get it. So, how do I arrive mod y is you may not be able to differentiate. So, how do you get how do I how do I get my correct solution from here. So, that is a best how do I get my correct solution. So, here is something which I want to tell you you may be able to follow that write this, write this may be I use a different color, write this as modulus of y t into e power minus a t. These are simple things, but the moment you understand the simple things and the difficulty, the difficult things are the combination of simple and easy things. There is nothing like difficulty per se. All your uh, simple and easy things if you put it together, looks, uh, things looks very difficult and you want to change it. So, it is your job, any student's job or any teacher's job is to understand things uh, the easiest way possible. So, here you have a constant. Here is again one need to use one of the important thing what are called uh, the continuity of the function. Okay. So, this function being differentiable is a continuous function, okay. continuous function and another thing since this is a modulus this formula is valid c is greater than c equal to 0. So, here itself here itself this is a positive quantity this is a positive quantity, hence this is valid. Of course, this is coming something like e power c naught. So, it is greater than or equal to 0. So, you will immediately see that this is not for any constant for negative thing, but this is a continuous function. Here is a first small exercise for you, exercise which you should do it. So, whenever we are giving this course, we will be leaving small lot of gaps in the proofs we will be leaving small small exercises for you and that you have to work out before going for the next lecture. So, study the entire course uh, by lecture by lecture, solve the problems, solve more problems get into the books, try to uh, understand more examples we may uh, present only one or two examples, but you try to get more and more examples and then you present it. The example let uh, f from r to r continuous continuous and modulus of f is a constant is a constant. This is a very simple example the moment you learn continuity you will be learning, but if you know it you follow that f is a constant then f itself is a constant. Okay, that is the thing. If the model if you have a continuous function whose modulus is constant, then the function is. This is not true if f is not continuous. This is not true if f is not continuous. Find the example not continuous. Find examples. Trivial examples are available but you can find that one. Okay. With this observation, 
this is a con, uh, this more this is a continuous function this is a continuous function you see and whose modulus is constant hence this continuous function y t into e power minus a t itself is a constant ok. So, you will have so that implies the example implies uh, the exercise implies y t e power minus a t equal to c is a constant what is the difference from earlier this constant can be negative where c can be negative as well can be negative as well. So, that is why I call it very arbitrary arbitrary. So, these two important small observations which you have to one has to be very clear and you have the correct solution which you we see this kind of uh, small facts uh, uh, in your uh, study not only in ordinary differential equation uh, with other equations as well. And for uh, now we, we are going to give few examples uh, in the as I said in the next uh, uh, few lectures 2 to 3 lectures and we will start with uh, uh, some physical models. So, we are starting with uh, physical models. So, today now to complete this I may just do one example, example 1 you have the population model this is what we are going to do it and our it is easy for you to solve those who are studied any differential equation they will be able to solve it immediately, but the purpose is not that we want to see how we use the analysis to derive more about the knowledge of the trajectory population model. So, there are two things one is the linear model. So, we will start with the linear model and then we will see that linear model is not always correct uh, not always uh, be the good model then we will go to the one of the famous non-linear model given one by the biologist we will come to that. So, we will go to that one. So, we will have the linear model. So, suppose my y t represents the population represents the population at time t. So, let me population at time t. I want to do that. So, how do you suppose is a population is growing just based on the population no influence from anywhere else you have enough space no computation no natural disasters nothing it depends only on the population of the number of people available. So, it is a natural way to think that suppose you have two cities or two systems in which uh, one system you have n number of population n is the population other one is the 2 n is the population then after an year if there is a growth if it is a normal procedure the population the extra population in the first system and if you compare the extra population in the second system the second system will have the double the extra population than the first population you see. So, the simplest and easiest uh, uh, model is that your rate of change will depending on the population. How much it will grow is what is called the population rate. So, there will be a not be the uh, rate then a simpler model will be d y by d t the rate of change of population with this phenomena with there is no other things will be proportional to y itself that is easiest model and that gives you your linear model linear model d y by d t is equal to some r into y and you have seen you already solved instead of r with a you already solved this equation. So, suppose so, you will get the solution you see solution y t 
is equal to some constant into e power r t you see you have e power r t. So, if at t naught your initial time wherever you can put your initial time you know the population say suppose the population y t naught is equal to y naught then that will imply if you substitute at t naught you will get y naught. So, your population will be y at t will be y naught e power r into t minus t naught. You can evaluate and do that. These are the small steps, but I always suggest to the students that you better work out. You may looks trivial, but just substitute t naught and do that. That is the way you have to learn, learn the mathematics. Okay. So, you have your solution easy, easy way you have the solution completely. Now, we can immediately see observation that is what I said you got the solution do not stop there you have to always analyze the solution what happens and especially when you create a model of a physical phenomena based on observations data and all kinds of things you have to see that your model is actually true whether you are um, actually you are able to predict your thing, whether your um, model uh, goes wrong at some point of time and it does not uh, <coughs> really give you the does not really uh, represent your physical phenomena. You have to that is what is after the analysis which I represented the schematic diagram last week you have to after doing the analysis you have to go back to the modeling once more and you may have to you may need more data that is what I explained you know. So, you see that an immediate observation here this you can prove mathematically of course, is easy as t tends to infinity as t tends to infinity your population y t increases to infinity, but this is not a desired not a desired state of affairs. Nowhere in the universe you can have a population as time goes uh, the population will goes to infinity. What will happen is that when the population increases to infinity when the population becomes bigger and bigger there will be much more competition between the species. We are analyzing here only about one species there will be there are systems uh, which we may explain at least one example later uh, more than one species. So, where even with just one species we are analyzing this problem. So, within the, the system the two species two persons or two bacteria it can be a bacteria whatever it is there will be competition between for food space uh, everything all kinds of competitions. Uh, here. So, we are looking into a model where there is only a, a competition between them. still we are not taking into account other aspects like national uh, natural disasters and things like that and that can also and also the population can come from uh, other places to this one all kinds of things can happen we do not take. So, we are going to give you a nonlinear model now as this model is not suitable when this model is not suitable when the population is not the popul this model is reasonably ok uh, when you are uh, population is not too big and it is uh, it is a known fact, but uh, so we are going to give a nonlinear model. So, going to introduce a nonlinear model with just one fact that you are taking into account the competition between the species within them not the competition with the species with another species. So, the competition and this is given by one of the famous bio Dutch mathematician mathematical biologist Dutch mathematical biologist it is a wordless is called 
what is the spelling I think just this is given probably in uh, 18 something like 30s or something approximately. So, how do you take into account? So, let us uh, uh, anything to understand anything to model you have to have an intuitive feeling about that. Suppose, you have a population with n people, what are the po possible number of computations a person can meet all other people. So, a person can meet that number of encounters this is called basically I am trying to give a statistical average. What are the number of encounters a simple thing we will get it can uh, the number of encounters is the the first person can meet n minus 1 person maybe the next person can meet n minus 2 like that. So, the number of encounters will be thing if everyone meets everybody that will not win that is where you have to understand the population and then you have to put a factor this is something like uh, up, uh, equal to n minus 1 into n by 2 that is in the order of n square. So, the num this is approximate. So, if n is the number of people in a population the number of all encounters between each person meets one is order of n square. So, it is the message is that it is of order square, but not that everybody will meet. So, you have to understand when you are modeling it you have to understand on what fraction and this you have to understand from a particular thing. And what world is given is a model then d y by d t you have already you have the factor r let me use it a now that r is the same as a here a y, but then due to this encounter you are saying that two persons meets encounter they get killed may be two bacteria mean they attack because both of them will be trying for the same space or same food. So, they one of them they do the fighting and one of them will survive. So, it will reduce the population it will be in the order of y square, but not that everyone will meet. So, there will be a factor. So, as I said for a particular problem whether it is a bacteria growth human population growth uh, study how to choose a and b depends on the particular population which we are not going to give it here. It has to do a statistical analysis you have to collect the data how over a long period of time and you have to evaluate a and b for a particular population. Even for a particular population it may work for a certain period of time. So, you have to do an update maybe you will make a remark again later of that one. So, you have a nonlinear model you see this is a nonlinear model given by d y by d t is equal to a of y minus b of y square. And suppose you are at initial time y naught is equal to y naught. So, you have a very nice initial value problem you see. So, two steps we want to do it here. So, as I said we are not going to give you all the details about the problem I would request the student to go through it and fill up the gaps whichever is missing there. So, first you want to solve it if possible always that is a thing solve it if possible that is the first thing. Then do the interpretation just solving is not enough after that I want to understand just like in the previous example which you have seen which like previous example your population is growing I want to understand a mathematical study of that equation after getting the solution. The solution may not reveal this this one and analyze it. Okay. And this is what you are quickly going to do that one. So, you have the problem d y by d t again let me write initially we spend go little more slowly y square y at t naught is equal to y naught. This all of you know it you can use my change of variable co concept or now you are know that what does that mean you can do the same thing you can uh, uh, write down your 1 of a of y minus b of y square d y. This is formal, but I can still write formally if you do not like now 
Now, after seeing that writing this is uh, you have to be uh, you have to see this with pinch of salt. Whenever I say that there is an integration formula, you can divide with a d y by d t equal to 1 and do the same procedure to do that one. So, you will uh, after that you integrate you integrate and put a constant no problem. This is fine how to integrate is all right. Now, how do you integrate this one in the of course, we would have studied how to integrate this one. This integration is done via partial fractions, partial fractions. You can write down. So, you uh, you do go and do this, you have to do it b y square, you can write it as probably you can write it as I do not do the computation, but I you should do the computation when you study this course 1 over y with a minus b of y ok do the computation do the is an exercise whatever I am leaving are part of the exercise which you should do it instead of writing the exercise at the, at the end of it we will write the exercises here. So, do the computation ok do that one once you do this one. So, these are in the 1 by y 1 by a minus b 5 form now you write it everything Yeah. One minute, uh, Ram. It's fine. Okay. Okay. We'll continue. Okay do the computation. So, this is not minus and this is plus do this one. So, this is in the log form this is in the log form make sure that everything is writing in the modulus form do not make the mistakes like writing 1 by log y 1 by log of a minus b y what you have to do is that. So, that is a next exercise for you exercise for you to get it you produce a solution an implicit form implicit representation implicit representation you prove that representation of solution how do you get an implicit representation of the solution 1 over a log mod y by mod y naught y naught is positive because that is given to you y naught is a positive quantity which is given to you or it can be 0 also no problem, but here it is greater than 0 into modulus of a minus b y naught by a minus b y to get that one is equal to t minus t naught. So, you have a solution representation you see quite often you stop at this stage I want do not want you to do that ok this is for t greater than t naught. This does not say anything about uh, you do not understand how your y behaves though you may complete that I have a solution to your problem I have an implicit relation connecting between y and t, but uh, you have to do much more in this analysis. And that is what we are going to do a bit more thing. We have to see few things about it quickly. You will learn these facts later. D y by I am telling you a few facts, but you write it properly to complete it. D y by d t is equal to a y minus b y square. Look at this expression now. When y equal to 0, when y equal to 0, R h s r h s is equal to 0 that mean this such points are called equilibrium points equilibrium points 
and whenever you have y equal to 0 and if you, if you so if you have solution y at t naught starts at 0 then d y by d t will be 0 and it remains to be 0. So, you get a y equal to 0 as an identical solution it does not move. So, it is an equilibrium point. So, the solution starts at the origin at 0 at t naught if the solution starts from 0 the solution will remain to be 0 all the time. The interesting thing is that there is another equilibrium point there is another equilibrium points equilibrium points. What is that equilibrium point? This can be a y minus b y square can be written as y into a minus b y. So, when b equal to y equal to a by b ah, one more point here normally b is very small compared to a that is again a thing a fact which you have to tell. Then again this is 0. So, again you have a second equilibrium point when y equal to a by b. So, if you have if you try to draw this thing here. So, if your population so the a by b will play going to play an important role here. So, if you have your population if your population starts at t naught this is the t naught and if this is your uh, y equal to 0 graph that is nothing but y equal to 0 graph. So, if your y t naught is equal to 0 your y t will remain to be 0 all the time it's the same thing when you have a curve this is the curve y t equal to a by b y equal to a by b curve. So, this is also an equilibrium point. So, at t naught if your solution is there the solution will remain to be there. And then it is an interesting fact that two trajectories all that you will be learning here in a two trajectories uh, the two trajectories will not uh, meet. So, whenever your initial population is somewhere between 0 and a by b the entire trajectory will be somewhere here we do not know we are going to understand more of this graph. Similarly, if your trajectory is somewhere here the trajectory will be here. So, what it shows that what I am trying to say that if your trajectory y naught uh, starting between the population 0 and a by b 0 y naught less than a by b I the exercise is that you have to explain these things whatever I have explained do it and write it properly. And this trajectory so if you have a proper thing the trajectory will not come here this you will be learning you cannot cross that trajectory because the moment you come here it will remain there you cannot come there you cannot cross this trajectory. Similarly, it cannot even go here such trajectories will not exist if you take here the trajectories will not cross here if you start from initial point here. So, that immediately shows even though intuitively it is correct. So, the eventually what I am trying to convey to you is that your trajectory the solution y t will always remain to be positive between. So, you see even the intuitively clear yes the population goes, but if you have a non trivial population to start with as a y naught if you start your population will always be positive ok and that is the fact you, you are using it. So, uh, so from your solution so what I want you to prove eventually is that use these facts whatever I have explained use the fact explained use these facts to show that y t you already seen y t is always positive one thing the second part is more important a minus b y naught by a minus b y is also positive this is an important thing you want you to prove it. This is what I explained from the uh, earlier graph. This graph what I say that if, if this is one fact there is more information because this is y t equal to a by b is also a equilibrium point if y naught is between a by b y t will not only positive y t will be remaining in a, a by b here. 
Similarly, if y t is greater than a by b, y naught is greater than a by b, y t will also remain greater than a by b. Hence, the solution which you see it, the, the solution he will see, you see here the solution which we get it, this will and this will retain the sign and hence the whole thing will have the same positive sign it will retain the same because it will and this is what you have to prove it in, to prove this one. So, prove this, this is an exercise for you. Once this is positive, the entire modulus can be removed from the solution. If you look at here, the entire this is positive, this is positive, the entire modulus can be removed and you can write your solution. So, that is where next exercise for, uh, thing for you the exercise. So, it is a 1 by 1 exercise uh, write the solution now in explicit form earlier you got it in, in implicit form write the solution. Write the solution as y of t equal to a y naught by b y naught plus a minus b y naught into e power minus a into t minus t naught. Prove this, write down this thing for t greater than t naught, you see. So, you have an explicit representation and still this is not enough for us. We want to understand it uh, uh, a little more about it and probably we will do that uh, in the next lecture. We will uh, uh, little more time another 5 minutes I will spend on this equation in the next lecture and one thing you can immediately see is that y t as t tends to infinity this fact goes to 0. Once this goes to 0, a y naught and y naught will get cancel y naught and y this will go to 0 and y naught and y naught will cancel and you see that limiting behavior. So, the limit goes to uh, y t goes to a by b you see that is what is. So, wherever you even if it is a very small population the population will go to infinity. We will see these facts in the next lecture and we will do further uh, examples. Thank you.